In this video, we're going to take a look at some logical equivalences, and we're going to use truth tables. So we aren't actually doing a mathematical proof, we're just showing equivalence. I want to go through some terminology with you before we start demonstrating logical equivalence with truth tables. But before we do that, let's just recall how to create a truth table and remind ourselves about disjunctions and conjunctions and whatnot. So remember in a truth table, we're on the left side always going to give all of the possibilities. Now as we can see here, I have just one proposition which is P, and so all of the possibilities of P are true false. Just keep in mind that we would take 2 to the n, where n is the number of propositions, and here we just had 1, so 2 to the first, and that's why there's two rows. Not P is everything um, that happens in P negated, so true becomes false, and false becomes true. Then remember this is an or, so I'm looking at P or not P, and when we look at or, I want you to think about addition, because or is kind of like addition, and in fact in some texts you will see true displayed as 1, false displayed as 0, false is 0, true is 1. And then if I'm taking or, what I'm saying is P plus not P, and P plus not P is 1, which is true. And false, which is 0, P plus not P, which is true, equals 1, and 1, as we know, is true. So what we call this is a tautology. A tautology is a proposition which is always true. So as we can see, this would always be true. So now think about it if we weren't using ones and zeros, the way that we've talked about or before is one or the other needs to be true for it to be true. And so obviously that's the case here and that's the case here. So whether we use plus or uh, the reasoning that we used before, we still know that's a tautology. This one is our and, and I want you to think about that as multiplication. So I might think about 1 times 0 equals 0, or 0 times 1 equals 0, and either way I end up with false. And again, the way that we thought about it before when we talked about and, an and was they both had to be true, and as we can see here, they're not both true, and as we can see here, they're not both true. This is called a contradiction, and a contradiction is a proposition which is always false. So here's my contradiction, and here is my tautology. Now, a contingency is a proposition which is neither of the two. So it's neither a contradiction or a tautology. For example, P, if we can look at the um, entries in my P column, I've got a true and a false. So it's not always true, it's not always false, it's a contingency. So we are trying to show now that two compound propositions are logically equivalent. P and Q here are representing compound propositions. So I'm not using P to represent I went to the store and Q to represent I bought a Diet Dr. Pepper because they're delicious. I'm saying these are compound propositions. So it could be something say like this or like this. So that's what we're going to do in this first example together. Now to show the two compound propositions are logically equivalent, we have to show that P, if and only if, Q is a tautology. Remember tautology tells us that it's always true, which means that those two compound propositions will have the same truth value in all possible cases. This is why a truth table is fantastic for this, because all I have to do is create a truth table that gives me the truth values in all possible cases and show that they are equivalent. And again, we're going to use this sign to show that they are equivalent. It's kind of like an equal sign with an extra line, and it means that they are logically equivalent. So let's try our first practice question together. 
And just as a reminder, a truth table has three parts. On the left-hand side is always, however many propositions we have, all of their combinations. So here, as we can see, I have P, Q, so I have two of them. We take two to the however many propositions we have, and in this case, two, and that's where I got four rows. That's how I knew we needed four. Then I start with true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. That's the first part of my truth table. The second part of my truth table, the middle, is always anything that I need, any parts that I need to get to my final conclusion. So sometimes you won't have anything there, but most likely you will. In this case, I just have one thing, and that's not P. Because as we can see, I already have a column for Q and for P and for Q, but I don't have a column for not P. So I need a column for that. Not P tells me that I'm taking whatever's in the P column and changing it. So true becomes false, true becomes false, false becomes true, false becomes true. We negated it. That's the not P. I'm going to try to get that T back in that box a little bit better. Now, we go to the third part, which is the important part here. The important part shows us what is the truth value for not P or Q. So again, keep in mind, this is an or. And when we're doing an or, we're saying one or the other needs to have a true. So not P and Q, notice there's a true in what I just circled. This is a false false, so there's no true, so the result is false. This is a true true, it's just fine to have two trues. And this is a false true, and I have at least one true, so it's true. Now let's try my other compound proposition, which is if P, then Q. Which means if P is true, then Q must be true to return a true value. And if P is false, then it's true. So here I have true, true. Well, if P is true, Q must be true, and that is the case. Here I have true, false. If P is true, Q must be true, and that's not the case, so it's false. If P is false, it doesn't matter what Q is, the result is true. So here's my result. Then we examine the two. And typically, I just put a box around them and say, hey, look, yay, these two match up. Therefore, I have demonstrated that the two compound propositions are logically equivalent. Here's one more practice for us to try together. And again, I've cheated a little bit and already set this up for you. But it's important that you know how to set it up yourself. So if you don't, I'm going to go through that very quickly. If you already know what you're doing, you can go ahead and start on the truth table um, and just ignore me talking to you. So again, what I would do to start is say, how many propositions do I have? I have P and Q, that's two. So I take two to the second power because there's two propositions. So that means I need four rows. I need a column for P and a column for Q. And I can go ahead and fill in true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Yes, I'm going through that part kind of quickly. Then I need a column for every part of a proposition. So I have P and Q here. And then my final solution is not P and Q. And then I've got not P, which I need a column for. And I've got not Q, which I need a column for. And then I've got my final result, which is not P or not Q. So now that I have everything set up correctly, let's go ahead and work on this. My first column that I'm going to fill in, I'm going to get rid of all of these pesky arrows, is P and Q. And remember for an and, both values must be true to result in a true. So P and Q, which is true, true, gives me a true. This one, they're but not both true. They're not both true here. They're not both true here. So there's my new column. Now to fill in not P and Q. 
negates anything here. So true becomes false, false becomes true, false becomes true, false becomes true. So that is the column that I am going to compare over here. So let's go ahead and fill in what we need to for the other columns. This is not P, so that becomes false, false, true, true. This is not Q, which becomes false, true, false, true. And then this one is not P or not Q. So remember when you're dealing with an or, you're dealing with um, one or the other must be true. So is one or the other true? No, so it's false. Is one or the other true? Yes, yes, and yes. Sorry, you can't see that very well. False, true, true, true. So as we can see, comparing this column with this column, we see that they are logically equivalent because they returned the exact same truth values. Here's one for you to try on your own. So if you would, press pause, try this question, and then when you are ready, press play to see how you did. So the part that hopefully should come pretty quickly for you, and again, hopefully you understand how to actually set up this table, but remember here, we're just going to do true, 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 false, 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 and then true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, and then alternate, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. That way we know we have all of the different combinations. And then again, how did I set this up? I have a column already for P. I needed to create a column for Q and R. I needed to create a column for P or Q and create a column for P, I'm sorry, P or R. And then of course, the ones that I have in gray are the complete compound proposition that we're going to be comparing. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we have Q and R, and remember that means both of them must be true for this to be true. So that's a true, that's a false, that's a false, that's a false. That's a true, since they're both true. Since we have a false there, we have a false. Since there's a false, we have a false, and then two falses make it a false. So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and find this column. I'm just going to use black here. So we're going to say this is P or Q and R. So I'm looking at, let's use green, this and this. So these are the ones that I'm looking at. And remember, if it's an or, we're saying one or the other must be true. And if one or the other is true, then the statement is true. So now I have a true here, a true here, a true here, a true here, a true here. This one is false, this one is false, this one is false. Now let's take a look at the other side. So I'm going to look at P or Q first. And remember that's an or, so that means either one can be true. So I'm looking at true, 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 true. And again, I'm saying true every time there's a true in what I'm circling. True, true, false, and false. Now I'm going to do the same, but I'm looking for P and R. And again, that's a true, because I have at least one true. And that's a true. And that's a true. And that's a true. And that's a true. Those are two falses, so that's a false. False true gives me true. False false gives me false. 
So now what I'm trying to do is come up with this column that says both must be true. So if both are true, then I get to put a true in this column. So again, I'm comparing, let's see if there's any colors I haven't used yet, here's purple. I'm comparing these two, and that's true. And again, this is an and, which means both of them have to be true. Both true, so that's a true. Both true, so that's a true. Both true. Both true. Not both true, so that's a false. Not both true, so that's a false. And both false, so that's a false. Now, the question is, are these two logically equivalent? Well, we have looked at the truth table, and we can see that this column and this column are in fact equivalent, so we have shown by a truth table that these are logically equivalent. Up next, we're going to take a look at some key logical equivalences, including De Morgan's Laws.